So I'm still in Korea. I am having a drink at nine in the morning. And <laughs> this is the clear part of the makgeolli. I think it's called takju. I'm having a k a p y o n g j a t makgeolli from the p y o n i e j e o m which is a convenience store. And then I keep on receiving these gifts in Korea and people keep giving me things, which is like really awesome and sweet. So um, there are these like little thin wafers, these mushroom wafers that oh, we got in s o k j u I love those. Um, it's like this like umami crispy thing that has like a hint of sweetness. So maybe I'll do like a little ASMR. You hear that? <laughs> I really so want to do a full like ASMR video. I, I think mm-hmm. episode idea for sure. Yes. Okay. Um, All right, what are I'll you go next. So I... Talking? Yeah, so I've got some sake. It's, I don't know what the brand, Dasai 39, I guess, product of Japan. I don't know. I'm drinking it out <laughs> of a very beautiful flower shot Ooh. glass that Christine got me for Aww. Secret Santa. Um, so I have a so cute. lovely little flower glass for that. And then I'm like, this season, I'm just having like really legit snacks. I've got like a little plate. <laughs> Of like samgyeopsal, samjang, samgyeopsal is pork belly, samjang, which is like a fermented bean paste dip and some rice and lettuce. It's just some, I picked off of Dane's dinner because he like picked up like a a plate. So I just took a few pieces for myself. Oh my gosh. I can't, I can't wait to like see Christina making like a big ass, like sam, like in the middle of like... (laughs) Some ch- uh, like one, one, one of us is crying, one of us is yeah. eating a big s a m So funny. She's gonna be like, okay, wait, wait, wait. I have wait, ASMR. I have some ASMR yeah. for you. I'm gonna get it. I'll get it ready Seriously. for later. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, okay, so I'm drinking just whiskey. Like I, I wasn't feeling all that like inspired today. Also, I just didn't have like a cool, like a really fun cool drink. But I'm drinking this like plum flavored whiskey. Ooh, it's a fun pretty it's fun it's like kind of sweet so it's nice as like a dessert like a little dessert after dinner situation i've been saving this bag to eat during s a m c h a because i wanted to shout this company out and it's called better sour oh, yes. um Ooh. this is this like this like gummy and um it on- this this bag only has three grams of sugar and is only 60 calories but you couldn't tell because it's so good it and so it's good. um yeah it's founded by um these two women they're um iranian american and it's so good it's like very 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 good um look at these flavors there's apricot pomegranate and plum And then mm. there's a, a different bag, um, and that one has like guava, like calamansi, and ume, like very just like delicious flavors. But yeah, it's very very good. It's like a sour. It's just like a sour fruit gummy, basically. That's pretty healthy for you. So I just where wanted to you, shout where them out. Where can you buy it? I think right now in LA, you can buy it um, in Air One. And then, of course, um, <laughs> and then, and then um, in New York, you can buy it at what was that spot, Christina? It was like oh, go it's grocery. Like, there's like a pop up. It's called like I think it's called like pop up grocery or something, and it's down mm. in like Soho or in like Greenwich Village. I'm not sure somewhere mm. lower Manhattan. Mm. But yeah, so good, so good. I got to try that. All right. Mm. Shall we? Is it? Do we cheers now or do we cheers after the intro? We cheers whenever after the, the fuck we okay. want. <laughs> <laughs> a little about to. Oh, Christina. Oh, Christina. All right. On it today. We will cheers now and again after. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, cheers. <laughs> cheers. For today's episode, the topic is. Um, all things daddy. We're going to talk about our dads today. Um, <laughs> Not we... Pedro Pascal daddy, but like. No, no, no like our daddy. fathers, our appas. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is kind of like a follow on on to season one where we dedicated an episode to our moms. Um, and so we're going to talk about our dads today. Um, and then if you're new to Samcha, 
the way that we set up this podcast is that we have these three rounds. We have um, Irta, Ita, and Samcha. For every round, we go deeper. We ask um, questions and we that revolve around the topic. So um, we're really excited to talk about our dads today. And we're going to start with a cheers to our appas. Let's get into it. Cheers. Cheers. Let's get into it. I feel like this episode's going to get real deep, so I think we need to take like another sip or two to get started. And to start off round one, let's just share a bit about what our dads were like growing up, like what was what was their role? Maybe you could compare it to your mom's role as well, going off of our season one episode. So who wants to kick it off and start the conversation about our fathers? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. After those two sips... I feel much more <laughs> grounded. Okay. <laughs> um, so in kind of thinking about my dad for this episode, I really realized that my dad is and always sort of was like this walking contradiction. So he's like very comfortable, like crying and like, you know, is like okay with showing that sort of emotion. But then he's also like, doesn't really share too much about his feelings with his words. He's really like stubborn and like has no boundaries, kind of like, kind of maybe like a typical Korean Ajashi might. Mm -hmm. um, but then he's also like silently kind of like, let me be me and like set my own like boundaries and like um, kind of with what I wanted to do with my life, my work, things like that. He was also like, really like soft and kind of has this like lead from the back type of energy but he was also like really opinionated and like stubborn mm. like again just as mm. just as um maybe like a typical korean address she might be um so like in short it it's it's just been kind of interesting thinking about my dad and how he's kind of always been a really contradictory character in my life like sort of predictable but then also mysterious mm. um mm. but then he's always like been very like loving and caring and like one of those types where like um if you say you like mangoes one day just like 40 boxes Aww. of mangoes show Aww. up so like he's kind of that vibe um but yeah i've had like lots of lots of kind of deep thinking and learning around my dad and kind of like this contradictory nature. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to like explore a little bit more mm -hmm. about that and like kind of understand um, where that maybe comes from or like how in which maybe he came to be that way. Mm -hmm. uh, would you say that your mom by contrast is like much more consistent? Yes, exactly. My mom, I mean, they couldn't be more different. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think my mom. So, I don't want to say the word. That's so <laughs> interesting. Funny. Intriguing. That's so Intriguing. funny because yeah. they give like similar vibes to me. I mean, I've spent like all of like ten minutes total with your parents yeah. like, in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like they 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 could be very different. My mom is like a little bit more open and she sort of like adapts and can be adaptable. Whereas like my dad is just pretty like steadfast and stubborn. Mm. One question that I have is that like, does your, do you and your mom talk about this dynamic of this like contradictory personality or is that something that you guys have recognized together or is this something that you just like thought about and you've come to like gather on your own? I mean, there's definitely a lot of like complaining I do about my dad to my mom but mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever brought up like this contradiction or like this contradictory nature that I think I've kind of realized of my dad mm -hmm. like I've always known it but I think again just kind of in thinking about like this uh, this episode and how we're gonna record it I was like okay I was thinking about my dad and trying to understand and think about like what sort of character he was in my life uh mm -hmm. growing up and even now and I just kind of like came to that so i will be calling my mother <laughs> after this <episode. laughs> do a little tea break. we'll have a follow-up yeah yes yes, yes exactly <laughs> what about you guys i would say my parents are also pretty opposite and i wonder if that just is very common with parents with couples in general but my dad is first of all he's like so unique <laughs> i think because uh just growing up it was always a very unique experience having my dad because all of my friends, parents, you know, immigrated at a much like later age. 
or like in their adulthood or like young adulthood. But my dad immigrated to the States when he was eight. And so he's always been like super Americanized. And that was always interesting when friends would meet him and they're, they're like, oh, I never say, oh, and he's like, hey, what's up? Like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. So that's like a very distinct, just difference from memory from growing up. And mm. My, yeah, my parents are pretty opposite. My dad is very like type A, detail oriented, like really quick also, like gets the, gets things done like quickly, efficiently. My mom is a little bit more laid back in that sense. So that was also, she's laid back, but then she was also like the stricter parent as well. Mm -hmm. So there was an interesting dynamic, but yeah, I just thought it was, it was funny that yeah, I guess my parents are pretty opposite too. And maybe that's just common anyway. My dad growing up, what was he like? It's kind of, it's kind of, <laughs> this is like telling because <laughs> my memories of my dad, he was, when I was growing up, he was building his own business. And so he was just gone all the time. Um, I mean, he like slept at home, but like the memories that I have of him, there are very few, uh, which is kind of sad because like, what we did growing up together was that he would drive us to school in the morning um, and then he would go and do like a full day of work and then we would have dinner together at nighttime. And then on the weekends, he would spend his time alone, like hanging out with his friends, going golfing. And then we would have Sunday together by going to church. But that was like literally most of my memories with my dad. I mean, like he was always present. He was always consistent, but he was also always working because um, mm. that's like what he was like trying to survive and make it here in the States um, as an immigrant as well. Um, so he's always busy. So that was like my main memory of my dad growing up. And then like the dynamics were also very different between like my dad and my mom. My mom was like a stay at home mom. She's taking care of four kids. She's like super busy. Um, and then like my dad would try to like pitch in when he could, but he had like, an, he like hired a nanny to help with the like child to like support my mom in taking care of four kids because he couldn't do it. So that was like, basically my dad was like the financial provider. He was like the rock of our family. But to that extent, those are like my memories of my dad growing up. Have you like mm, yeah. been able to spend more time with him like later or like maybe, it, maybe it's like during family vacations, you get like more like dedicated yeah. time or how has that changed or, or not in your adulthood? I think that now that he's established his business, it's, he has more time, but the relationship that I have with my dad, it just doesn't like come like appear out of nowhere, right? Like it's something that you have to like continually work on. So I think like I'm still trying to like navigate this relationship with my dad, building a relationship with him, seeing him in like the ways that Megan, you were trying to like understand your dad, where he comes from. So I think that like as an adult, I have more empathy towards my dad. And um, I, there are like things that like, I also have to work through, like we all have daddy issues, but um, I don't want to blame him because I understand like where he's coming from and like the, the absence that was there in my childhood. So there are like a lot of like things that I need to work through in terms of like how I want to set up this relationship with my dad. But um, we do have more time together where I don't think my dad also knew how to like talk to kids. <laughs> like <laughs> he, had, he wasn't like good at like playing with kids. Like he adores babies and stuff, but like a teenage girl going through, uh, her period and all this stuff, like he doesn't know how to talk to a girl. Um, so now that like I'm older, I think I can have like fuller conversations with him, but yeah, it's still like a work in progress. I would say. As is everything yeah. in life. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I want to add here, like, again, not to toot our own horn, <laughs> yeah. but I do want to, like, kind of have this moment of cheers because I think it's really easy to, like, sit around and be like, I don't have daddy issues. My mm. dad's amazing. Or, like, I don't have problems with my mom. Like, she was mm. the best, you know? And, Yes, I think I think we I I think we're in again. I know we're putting this up on the internet, but like w this is a safe I think community and a safe space to be able to share like grievances or like things that our parents lacked or like things that we wish was different or things that were great um and not have it be like oh we hate our parents. Like we love them. We love our parents. Um yeah. and I mean we we're, we dedicate, you know, 
full episodes of full conversations <laughs> um, to kind of digging deep. But I also just want to be like, damn, we're awesome. Cheers. <laughs> oh my God. Cheers. Go us. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> How do you ladies think that mm-hmm. your relationship dynamics with your dad has mm-hmm. manifested in your like partnerships or the pe- the qualities that you look for in a life partner? Oh my god. That's like another sip that I need to do. <laughs> I know. I feel like um on the surface level there's like a lot of things that are similar between Dane and my dad. It's like very superficial things. It's like They both love sports and like love LA teams. And like, that was a really good bonding thing for them when they first met. And like, even today, like they'll always text (laughs) about games and stuff. And they're both just like really silly and like, just do like stupid, silly shit. Um, So those are like similarities, but I do think I'm like very similar to my dad personality wise. And so I think I actually Dane in that sense, then is probably like more opposite because I'm more like my dad and I'm I like I was looking for someone subconsciously or I don't know to balance me out a little bit. Like I'm the one who's like so anxious and like catastrophizing all the time and like my dad is like that. And so Dane kind of is the opposite mm. of that. So there's like superficial aspects that are the same. And then personality wise, they're pretty pretty different recently in therapy of course i don't know how this came up but my therapist was talking about how like subconsciously you end up looking for like characteristics that your parents like lacked um in your partner Mm. does that make sense well yeah i mean i think i can see that i can see how you might yeah for things that like are comfortable and familiar you might also mm-hmm. look for things that maybe right. aren't the best, but because you're used to it, right, you're looking right. for that, like without realizing, because that's just what you know. And then I could also see, uh, to your therapist's point, like, yeah, if there's something that your parents didn't provide for you, like yeah, you're going to sure. look for that. And then this is the part so where, <laughs> totally makes sense. Like, no, I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. Again, mm-hmm. thinking about like my dad and then thinking about Sean, um, I was like, Basically, I was thinking about it in the context of like what, you know, my therapist was telling me how like kind of subconsciously you are looking for a partner that has these sorts of traits that maybe was lacking in a parent. And so like I was just thinking about how like, for example, my dad, he lacks logic. So like he doesn't really like stop to think about Mm. like what makes sense and what doesn't he just sort of like acts on instinct and i'm kind of the opposite of that and like so is sean right like sean is like extremely logical like some you know sometimes to a fault um like it doesn't mean that he's not like emotional or sentimental or um or has all these sensibilities but like largely his decisions for things um are based in logic so like i thought that was kind of an interesting thing mm. that i kind of found in yeah you're like i need that in a partner John. yeah 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 exactly um and then like something also that my dad lacks and i will share what i love about my dad later but um something else that my dad lacks is kind of like this willingness to get really deep so like he has the mm-hmm. he has the sensibilities to like you know be able to cry and be tender but he doesn't have the willingness to like be really vulnerable um or like get too too deep with his words um and Sean is again like the opposite of he kind of fills that lack right like he has yeah. like really great um sensibilities and he's like a really good conversationalist and we should have Sean join some chat. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah, that would be so fun. Um <laughs> and like he kind of prefers like deeper conversations over like more surface level ones. And my dad's like all about like just surface level being, you know, kind mm-hmm. of like skimming the surface. So that was interesting. And then lastly, <laughs> um, my dad kind of like lacks. Now I'm starting to feel bad because I'm talking about all the things he lacks, but he 
he does lack like the sense of like like humility um and again mm-hmm. i'm gonna like generalize it but like he's just like he's just more he's just more stubborn and just like really has no boundaries and he has that like general korean ajushi like vibes where he's just like very stubborn in his ways mm-hmm. um and again kind of sean is like the opposite of that he's like very humble and he's warm and he's gentle like so it's been like a very thoughtful few hours as i'm kind of thinking about my dad and then the things that maybe like i think that he's locking in and then you know what sean fills so that that was pretty Mm. pretty fun i guess for lack of a better term to think about (laughs) um yeah yeah. Yeah. christine do you think like in your relationships it's been more of like looking for similarities or looking for things that were lacking uh yeah a hundred percent so like in those dynamics that you two mentioned with like (laughs) you (laughs) i was like i was like was it more of this or was it more of that (laughs) both i'm gonna answer both um All yeah, I'm thinking about <laughs> my previous relationships and like what I subconsciously projected as expectations from a partner and how that was uh, a little bit like damaging, right? Like the the way that my dad showed up in my life was like the financial provider, um, someone who was like my rock, that someone that I could lean on, right? Um, and that was like something that I projected onto a partner. Uh, my dad was pretty absent, like emotionally. Um, and he was also like, yeah, he was very hands off. Like he let me do whatever I wanted to do because he believed in me and like he wanted to support uh, me from like pursuing an independent track without having too much of a stronghold on giving me his perspectives on the ways that I should steer my life. I was very into like, that's how I kind of like developed this like independent personality. And so that's kind of like Mm -hmm. what I expected from a partner was to be hands off to allow me to independently make my decisions. And then also like be financially stable, um, just in case anything goes wrong. So that's like what I projected in previous relationships. But like, that's not the type of partnership that if I like take a step back and have that awareness, it's not like the type of relationship or partnership that I want to build with a life partner, right? Like if I were to go back and ask my dad for the things that, oh my God, I'm getting like so emotional. <laughs> like if you were to go, um, if you were like younger and you had like the capacity to ask your dad for what you needed during that time, um, I would ask my dad to like play with me and to like build these memories. And that's like the types of, that's like the type of relationship that I want to build with my partner um, instead of having like having like financial stability is great. Um, having that like bedrock in your life is great. Um, and I know that my dad um, worked really hard to provide that, but it's also like there are other needs as a child. Um, so I do think that like, that's like what I look for in like my next relationship or the dynamics with my next partner is like, can I be friends with this person? Can we enjoy our time together? Can I sit there with him and be very, very comfortable and at ease? And so I think that that's like something that is like what I'm working on. It's like an awareness that I've built through the relationships that I've had in the past, but we're getting very tearful talking about our dads. Um, I still love my dad, but I think that like in the ways that you have these awarenesses about like where your dad lacked um, growing up, it's like, I'm glad, Megan, that you found Sean um, and have him because um, those characteristics and qualities that like your dad couldn't show up for you or give you the things that you needed, like you found that person and you've like built this beautiful dynamic with him. Mm. Damn, we went there. We went there. Oh, we went there. <laughs> oh, I think we need a little yeah. time. <laughs> cheers. It's I love my dad. Cheers. I love my dad. He's the best. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. We, all, we all do. We cheers. all do. I don't know. Can you guys like relate to that or is that like something that you guys like – have thought about in terms of like how you because like every even though like you two are in like very stable relationships there's like things that you're still working on things that you're working through things that you're growing um into as like a person do you still like kind of like challenge each other to challenge yourself Mm -hmm. and also like challenge your partner to like build a more beautiful dynamic into one that you wish you had with your parents to be honest and this 
maybe this goes into Samcha mm-hmm. actually. So maybe we'll just like head on over there and I can let's share my thoughts because I feel like it's more <laughs> yeah, related let's, to let's what go. we were going to say for yeah, Samcha. Let's so let's, let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Samcha, we're going to talk about, you know, what are just some things that we clashed on with our dads? Um, And I don't know about clashed on, but, you know, Christine, to answer your question of reflecting on like my relationship with my dad and then my relationship with Dane, like to be honest, for me, I think it's more like I see so much of my dad and me or like Mm -hmm. myself and my dad. Um, So that I think is more of the like what I like wrestle with versus like Dane and my dad like to be honest and maybe that's just like something I need to like dig into a bit more and like think about it more deeply and like uncover some stuff but I was mentioning earlier you know I'm very similar to my dad in terms of like being really anxious like in terms of like always just like thinking of every single possibility like my dad goes to the airport like three hours in advance like plans <laughs> that's where it comes out. from <laughs> and so that's where it comes from and so I you know my whole life like My dad has always been like prepared for Mm -hmm. anything. And like when we go on trips, like it always runs really smoothly. And like we always know, but like, um, but I do think that I either, I think it's like both genetically and like, you know, environment, like it's nature and nurture. But I definitely am the most similar to my Mm -hmm. dad, like out of others in my family. Um, My mom, as I mentioned, is like a little more laid back in that sense. Like she, when we're driving, I'll always notice things of like, oh, like they built a new like store there or like, oh, like that thing. Or remember like that store, like on that street. And my mom like never knows what I'm talking about because she's just not observant in that way versus my dad like picks mm. up on those things. Um, where am I even going with this? I think um, when I see the negative like effects of my dad's like anxious tendencies and like obsessive tendencies it's like a mirror so then that's what makes it Mm -hmm. difficult where I have to like reflect on myself I have to like have um, I like try to have empathy because I know exactly what he's where he's coming from but at the same time I know that it's irrational because anxiety and all those things like don't always come from a rational Mm -hmm. place um so that's more of the the struggle that I deal with. I think I do feel lucky that um, my dad also worked a lot, but um, but he, like, for example, growing up, my brother did Boy Scouts and my mom was, like, the main person who, like, took him to Boy Scouts, like, volunteered. And then I did, like, a different, like, youth organization. And my dad was the one who, like, always took me and was, like, Aww. a board member at, like, you know, of my, like, assembly and stuff like that. Um, so I do feel lucky in that sense, but it's more of just trying to figure out like, okay, I know where Mm. this comes from, like the way that I am. And it comes from someone who like, I do like respect and love dearly. And then I get, I just get like kind of sad sometimes knowing like he's getting older and like, I know what he's dealing with, but he probably didn't have the same resources and like same words to even describe like those types of Mm. traits so then it makes me feel like oh but it's like it's like helpless it's hopeless you know like he's just gonna live the rest of his life that way um so I'm just rambling now but that's more of like my my struggle um in terms of the relationship with my dad Mm. yeah do you think at this point like you like because you are aware of that like you can help kind of like draw out like hey dad or like have these types of conversations with him, like as a follow on to like the, the the question that you asked earlier in terms of can you have these conversations with your dad now of like the impacts that he had on you in this way and that like maybe he can relax a little bit more or that you're working on it and this is like something that has helped you kind of cope with your anxiety and um, those traits mm-hmm. that you were talking about. It's uncomfortable. It's like so awkward, I'm sure. Yeah, it is really awkward. Um, I think maybe I do it more um, like subcon- unconsciously or like in a more subtle way where if he's like stressed about something, then I'll try to like it, what works for me is like everything's going to be OK or like it doesn't work if someone says like just calm down. So I'll use like that 
that kind of language of like, oh, no, like everything's going to be fine. Or like this happened last time and it was like all okay. That's like the stuff that works for me. So I think there's that. Um, But again, like also like I live far from my parents. So I don't, I only have like so much time that I spend with them that there aren't that many opportunities Mm. for that to happen, which it's kind of sad. Yeah. Megan, how about you? Well, seeing like to Christina, I think um, what you were saying about how for you, maybe it's almost like a mirror, right? Like your dad is like a mirror of you. Um, and, but there's something actually really not, but, but, and there's something really cool about that because you can almost like, cause your dad is obviously decades older than you are. And so he has decades of life experience. Mm-hmm. And of course, everyone's life experiences are going to be different. However, like you can then see your dad and be like, oh, that's where I'm going to end up, you know, in 10, 20, 30 years, whatever it is. Um, So I think there's some some kind of interesting um, dynamics there. Oh my gosh, that just reminded me of like another similarity with Mm. my dad that like is kind of funny. Like my dad for as long as I can remember, he's just always hated his birthday. He's hated like getting <sighs> older. He'd always be like, oh, I'm like, oh, like I'm so, I'm old. I might as well be dead. Like always <laughs> makes jokes like that. He like hates aging. And like, I never thought that I minded aging because I I was like excited when I turned 30. Like I had no care or emotion about like turning 31, 32. But recently, like TMI, but we referenced it in another episode. Like I had a hemorrhoid. I like... Um, I can't remember like the other things I was just I I was like complaining to Dane about like how I'm just like so tired all the time and like how my metabolism's not the same and he's like wow like you're really struggling with aging (laughs) and you were like oh my god my dad never would (laughs) have yeah oh my god yep I am my father's Uh, daughter (laughs) my goodness well because I like bashed on my dad (laughs) <laughs> in Icha, in Samcha, I want to share a little bit about like why I, what I love about my dad. And then in also thinking about this, it was like, it was almost like a BC, a, a, an ADBC moment where it's like, um, like growing up, I loved my dad. And I would always say this because he was like, very supportive of me. So like anything I wanted to do, like, even if it was like kind of random or like, you know, not in the track of like, uh, what you should be doing, AKA doctor, lawyer, you know, whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. he was always like really supportive and really down. And so like, that was like what I would always say if people asked me like, Oh, what do you love about your dad? Um, and then I think currently I'm really appreciating him for like kind of a different reason. So like, I feel like I'm really appreciating his showing me of like breaking generational cycles of toxic male masculinity, Mm -hmm. right? Like Mm -hmm. I grew up seeing my dad cry when he saw something sad in a movie or like um, when his parents passed away, like he cried when um, my grandmother recently passed away. He, he cried. Like I've seen my dad cry so many times. And I feel like, you know, I don't know, again, I'm generalizing here, but I don't know if a lot of people like our age could say that about their dads. I feel like usually the dads are, you know, more macho, more, more, you know, masculine, like stoic, Stoic. exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, Like real men don't cry vibes. And my dad was like, never like that. Um, And so I feel like I really, really appreciate that about him. And he just kind of broke that cycle. And then it also like kind of to me, like inadvertently, he by example is telling me it's okay for me to break generational Mm. cycles. And like I'm learning firsthand what that looks like instead of just learning about it in a book or like, you know, having my therapist teach that to me. And so like, I'm, I'm really proud of that fact. And I just also like really appreciate him for being able to show me something like that. And love you, dad. Mr. Park. Mr. Park. (laughs) I'm sure that like, he's also, he also had that awareness of like, the men in my peer are like this. I want to show my daughter this. I don't even know. 
Uh-huh. That, like, or is that just him? That's... Like, is that just how he's like wired? Yeah, that's actually the cool. Like, I almost, I mean, maybe then that's giving him too much credit for mm-hmm. this, but I almost feel like he, like, it's not like he sat there and, go, and went, I'm going to break this cycle. Like, I'm going to be the guy yeah. to, like, you know, show my daughter that it's okay for for men to cry it's okay for them to show their emotions it's okay for them to be tender like Mm -hmm. you know i don't think he necessarily um sought out to do that but like that's just kind of what happened and i'm actually just like you know picking up what he he put down and and kind of taking that and saying oh shit, like that's really fucking cool for me to be able to say like, I grew up watching my dad cry. And so like when I see Sean cry or when I see whatever, like men, you know, get really deep or this or that or have these different sensibilities, like I can really appreciate that about. I want to cheers to that. Like, (laughs) because. (laughs) So many things. Another another cheers to Mr. Park. Because like breaking (laughs) generational patterns and behaviors takes awareness and a lot of emotional work. It's like labor, right? It doesn't just like happen out of nowhere. Like you can sweep it under the rug, but like Megan, you drawing like focus to this area saying like, this is not going to be repeated for the next generation. That takes so much work. So Mm -hmm. I just want to cheers to that. And like you too, Christina, was like being kind and tender to your dad and having that awareness of him and and his like behaviors and how it shaped you and you being like, hey, dad, like you can relax just a little bit or like trying to like communicate to him <laughs> in ways that like aren't so like crazy, but it's like, you know, and you want to like help and you want to make things better. So I think we should cheers to that. Because <laughs> we love yeah. our dads. We love our dads. <laughs> yeah. um, what else do we love about our dads? <laughs> so many things like Ken, Ken, that's my dad's name. He's like – such a consistent guy like and I know that he like cares deep down inside like and he showed that in so many ways like when I was going through like a hard time with like making a life decision he's like I'm gonna always support you I'm always gonna believe in you I'm always gonna be like your champion I'm always gonna be in your court Mm -hmm. um my dad has always said and articulated those things to me which has helped kind of give me confidence in whatever direction that I chose to move my life into. Another thing is, is that like, he's like a hype woman. Like he's my hype woman. He's my hype man. Like now, um, when I was like breaking up with my last relationship, he's like, that guy didn't love you in the ways that you deserve. Like, and saying these like really sweet things. And I like always hold on to the words that he shares with me is like, because now I can understand like what he's trying to tell me or like what he's trying to show me in terms of the ways that like he loves me and the ways that he cares for me. Um, So he's like always there. I know that like he's going to be consistent until like one of us departs (laughs) this planet. But like, Mm -hmm. but that's something that like I'm sure of is that like my dad loves and cares for me in the ways that he knows how to, not necessarily the ways that I hope to receive, but he tried Mm -hmm. his best, you know, like that's something that like I have like grown in empathy for or towards. Yeah. Cheers to Ken. <laughs> and then I'll give a toast to my dad. His name's James. James. James Ken. Um, I would never call ben. him James, though. That's very Ken, Ben, and James. <laughs> Your dad's name is Ben. That's cute. Um, but yeah, my dad, like, he is just, he will drop, like, everything to, like, do whatever I want Mm. (laughs) like that makes it sound like I'm a brat but it's like he'll he'll like when I whenever I come home to visit he's like up at 5 a.m like with me when I'm working and he's like are you hungry like I'm gonna pick you up Del Taco like you know and he's he's always like thinking of the family first and like always putting our family first um plus as I mentioned he's just like a silly goofy man (laughs) Um, he like so, comes out to your marathons you know, he like flies he, across the country like yeah he supports me for my marathon running he like yeah um, flew all the way to new york um to cheer me on when he visited we just like went bar hopping because he he loves a drink you know that's also where i get it from <laughs> so um so cheers oh, to my dad as well cheers. <laughs> yeah. well guys my goodness <laughs> how did i think <laughs> yeah truly <laughs> That was like, that was, we were, we went to all, all corners, corners of 
the emotional <laughs> wow <galaxy>. yeah <laughs> But it's like, I think that this is like what draws out like the human aspects of our parents. We thought they were superhumans when we were younger. But as we grow older, Mm -hmm. I think that like the impressions that they've had on us, like the impact that they've had on us also is like a very like human experience. Um, And like as we grow older into our 30s, like understanding where they come from, where our moms and dads come from, like the world, the like context in which like they raised us, like putting all of like piecing these bits uh together has been like uh oh yeah we are all humans and we're all like we all lack mm. in some places but we're also like awesome and we can like cheers and toast to um celebrating like the best parts of um our, our dads so I'm glad we could do that together <laughs> oh <laughs> me <too>. me three. <laughs> and on that note <laughs> Yes, on that note, thank you all for listening as usual. Um, we're still waiting for those DMs, those send emails. Us, send us your at gmail.com. daddy issues, right? Yep. Send, send it to us. Send it. Yeah. We can have a yes. whole new episode about other people's daddy's issues. Yeah. <laughs> Oh That'd be my gosh, fun. yes. We'll capitalize on your <laughs> on your trauma. <laughs> the end. Yes. <laughs> yes. Anyway, come find us, Hamcha Podcast, on all socials. And we'll we'll talk to you another time. All right. Thanks for listening, <laughs> y'all. Love you. Bye. Bye.